Get ready. Get set. And hold on. It's time for the Mouth of Matushak Show. I'm your host, Paul Gregor Matushak. And this is our special 9-11 Memorial Show. We were uh, kind of in radio silence there. Uh, we intended to start the show on time and then decided to start late. So y'all have me for the better part of an hour. You're probably going to be uh, listening via podcast because, uh, well, I wasn't up earlier. So, if you uh, are listening, you are out there and uh, wanting to call in and share your stories, please do. Um, if not, go ahead and uh, tweet me your links, or if you have my email, email them, or uh, post them over to my uh, Facebook page and uh, discuss your 9-11 memorial stories. But! Without further ado, let's uh, let's take a quick listen to, well, of course, our normal show to open by Powdered Zombies, otherwise known as uh, Chris Lash and uh, Steve Crowder. Oh, and it doesn't want to behave today. That's okay. We'll uh, we'll get to that in a moment. In the meantime, let's. Uh, remind you that uh, Steve Crowder should have his first video today on his own Louder with Crowder show. It's been a long road. When people ask me why I took so much time away, I didn't know how to answer them. When they asked me if I was coming back, I, I still didn't know how to answer them. Yeah, you know, I'd been injured pretty severely to the, the point walking was even hard. I had other business ventures going on, but that wasn't it. I just didn't want it. I didn't know if it's what I wanted to do anymore. You know, I never stopped believing in the same ideals. But having peeked behind the curtain, I kind of stopped believing in the movement. I stopped believing in people. Because this is a monumental time in history. I mean, the stakes are so high. And I just didn't see many of the people in control changing anything. I didn't see them winning. And then I got to thinking and realized, I don't need to know that we will win this thing. I only need to know that we can win this thing. I thought, you know, when I started this, I started doing it just because. And I loved it. So if I could get back to that, if I could get back to something more pure, if I could get everything under one roof, if I could control it, I can create something really special. Because if you want to start believing in people again, it starts with yourself. And you got that right. Crowder, folks, says that uh, right on the nail, or hit the nail right on the head, as usual. Hey, if you want to change things, you got to start with yourself, just because other people aren't so quick to hop in line, or if your numbers weren't as great as you anticipated, does that mean you give up? I mean, especially when your mission is to uh, tell the truth and help people to make up their own minds. Well, you can't be disappointed when they do. In fact, you need to be glad. And then you need to get back on your feet and get going with what your mission was and that's uh what crowder's doing and uh again him and chris lash as part of zombies mr america look what you've done yeah looking at the country is not what i intended gotta start to make a change before can never end the story of a failed nation run straight out of luck like a million Tyler Perry movies, ah, you suck. All you little have life is still selfish and warm. More voting in your self-interest now instead of the core. Principles have made this country both honest and true. Free to speak, worship, pursue of your happiness too. With all the money you fly, you gon' be needing a big freeze. Hate the size of the Fed like Jesus hated the fig tree. As the spending goes up, you gotta borrow some more. Borrow went from the Chinese like, oh my lord. Instead, you just tax more, you're increasing the size. Of the federal government, yeah, the Georgia surprise. You'll be done like Detroit, man. No, you ain't coming back. Forget it, I'm out. I'm on the low night. You little 
little glitches need reminding of what we were before And the sits that led us up to revolutionary war High taxes to the throne without a voice of our own Rule top down from the crime we wanted left alone Oh y'all so soft you're taking it year after year We were fighting red coats while we're brewing our beer Now I'm drinking spitting cyphers through a grill made of wood That's how it all went down in G-Dub's neighborhood Packing cabin balls like powder hammers with cock lock Click clack the law so back with the attack class like rock The chicken littles who don't know me listen don't let it twist We kick the A's or the B's for much less than this So don't deny the historical climbing out of the mud Follow me believe this creep with the seeds and be free This is my house. I protect this house. Yeah. My blood's going. My blood was going 13 years ago, folks. And ain't stopped. Actually, it was going before then. It just went in a full swing. Of course, this being the show that it is, we do need to cover some of the news out there. And we could talk about Ray Rice. You know what? I'm going to be called really cold and callous for this one, but I don't care. He's a wife beater. The courts need to do what they do with him. If his wife doesn't want to press charges, well, she needs to see some professional help. Just my two cents on that one. But uh, I really, really don't care um, what the NFL does with him. They're not the courts. I have no control over them. My votes don't mean a dang thing to them. All that matters to them is how much money I fork over to their merchandise so that they can make more money. And you know what? That's capitalism. That's all fine and dandy. People are willing to pay that. I have no issues with that. I just don't care. There's more important things to talk about. We need to talk about the fact that there are reports of ISIS cells operating near... Juarez, which is, uh, you can spit from Juarez and have it land in, San, and, uh, land in El Paso, Texas. So, should we worry about that? Especially since all I have to do is walk a few miles to the east and then take a left and head up north and walk across a river that only gets as much as waist deep at its deepest, come up the other side walk an additional couple of miles, flip up their thumbs, and hitchhike to wherever on I-10. 
in Texas in the United States. And there's nothing there to stop them. That should scare you. So uh, I'm not going to sit there and try to raise panics. I'm trying to raise some awareness, folks. I'm not sitting here saying that it's doomsday. But uh, I am going to say that what happened 13 years ago should serve as a reminder. You need to have your eyes and ears open. And uh, if you see anything suspicious, report it. Now, does that mean you live in fear and paranoia? Heck no! We're Americans. We need to live free. But freedom comes with a price. And that price means we have to guard that freedom. And remember, whenever you're free, there are people out there who want to take that away from you. They don't want you to be able to think for yourself, to decide what your own destiny is. They are going to do whatever they can to enslave you. And those people are called tyrants, the people who want to tell you how to live and what to do with your life. And we have them there in Washington. And some of them think there's some kind of a separation, that they're somehow better than you. And uh, we have a separation of the powers of the governors from the governed. You don't have a right to know everything in a separation of powers government, my friend. That is the difference between a parliamentary government and a separation of powers government. Yeah. Well, certain somebody named uh, Eleanor Holmes Norton can kiss my left knee and lick my right patella. And then she can let that tongue wander down to the jam between my toes. I don't care about what about she has to say except for the fact that she has it dead wrong. And uh, today, 13 years after that, uh, that travesty, that great tragedy that affected us all, affected the whole world. It changed. The world changed on that day. Well, you know, especially because of that, we need to stand tall and take those tyrants like Eleanor Norton and those who think the way she does and tell them to stuff it, to go pound sand. I already pounded sand, folks. I pounded sand going after those who did this to us, chasing them down finding them where they were hiding like the cowards they are so I did my part so of course that brings us up to words spoken by Presbo good old Obama last night went on during prime time interrupting some of our favorite shows for those of you who watch television big hint I don't not much anyway I prefer to read um, spend time with my family um, rather not waste it staring at the flickering idiot light box. But yeah, we have uh, good old uh, Obama speaking yesterday. And, uh, well, he had some things to say, folks. And uh, when he was flapping his gums, he, um, well, he was talking about going forward with a massive coalition and doing the right thing and taking decisive action. The problem is he'll act decisively when he decides what actions would be best for his approval ratings. He's going to act decisively when he figures out what the word decisive actually means. Right now he has a bank of uh, people trying to redefine that for him. But he's going to act with his grand coalition of nine and do the right thing and make sure that ISIS pays for what they've done and that they do not uh, succeed in their mission. He's not going to act unilaterally like President Bush did. Remember, President Bush acted all unilateral, doing everything by himself, along with his 37 other nation partners, 
coalition of 38, including the U.S., so 37 partner nations, whereas Obama has nine. Hmm. Kind of a disparity there, huh? Everyone has shake their fingers at Bush for acting unilaterally, even though he had 37 partner nations. And nobody is willing to call out Obama when he says, I'm going to act with this broad coalition of nine. Less than one third, almost one fourth. In fact, less than one fourth of what Obama, of what Bush employed. You know, that speech by Obama last night was reminiscent to me. It reminded me of another speech given uh, on September 10th, 13 years ago, September 10th, 2001, when the then, now no longer in office, President Clinton gave a speech and bragged about how he was very decisive and could have taken out bin Laden but decided it wouldn't be a, a good idea because he could not confirm or deny if the others on the ground with him or with with bin Laden that is when he found where bin Laden was he couldn't confirm or deny if they were terrorists or if they were innocent bystanders who were being used as human shields so he decided to minimize the collateral damage and not take that strike because of one or two people and yes I can understand it's a hard decision but look what happened the next day the, I mean the day after Bubba Clinton gave his speech suddenly had to second guess everything he had said the day before about how he made the right decision maybe he didn't the problem is we don't know we can look back with 2020 hindsight well the thing is with Obama in there we don't need that 2020 hindsight to know whether or not he's acting right or not. We have the 2020 hindsight of how things went down prior to September 11th, 2001. We now know what transpired and how it came about. We have lessons learned there. And the problem here is Obama is starting to repeat those same lessons, repeat the same mistakes. He pulled us out of Iraq prematurely. Instead of leaving us there as a force that could help stabilize the region, as well as uh, make sure that Iraq was ready to uh, stand up and take its own role in its own affairs. When they were already trying to govern themselves, but their military and police were not strong enough yet, folks. I was there. I, I sat there with my mouth agape when Obama was announcing the uh, the withdrawal dates and the change of mission and everything, the only thought that went through my head is, what drugs is he on? He, does, you know, he needs to come here and spend 90 days, 90 days as an advisor to these uh, people. Of course, Presbo with no military training would have not fared very well doing that. But if he had embedded himself with a training team and actually seen how well trained the Iraqi forces were, his gum flapping may not have been so, uh, they need to take control of their own stuff and be a force in their own region and we need to pull out. He might not have been saying that as, as freely as he was. It was clear that he wasn't paying attention to what was going on, just like he's not paying attention to what's going on now. And that is why many of us are looking around and we have some people who are have become so paranoid they're expecting the next big bad uh, because of what has led us here the thing is more Americans are awake more vigilant more paying attention than they were 13 years ago so do we need to be paranoid no do we need to be vigilant yes do we need to be ready to act yes do we need to be ready to report yes but do we need to be let our lives be ruled by fear and paranoia? No. Now, as for uh, where I was when this all went down, folks, before I go a step further, there's a song that came out right about.